Alright, welcome back to Anton Math. Uh, this is the second video of Unit 1 of our Part 6 of our Pre-Calculus series. Now in this video, I'm going to be um, taking what we learned about radians in the last video, and we're going to use that to derive out a couple of cool things that we can do with circles now um, with respect to their angles. So let me go ahead and just you know, draw a little circle here. Oh, that's not, not big enough. We're a little bit bigger than that. Let's There we go. And we're going to be looking at circles of this type where we have some angle coming out from the center of the circle. Now the first thing that I want to talk about, if we just have some you know, angle theta. Oof. In a circle with radius r we want to talk first about something called the arc length. I'm going to go ahead and highlight what I'm talking about right here in red. See this this red part, and I'm going to call this S. Arc, an arc of a circle is a portion of a circle, and in this context we're going to be talking about the portion of the circle, or the arc, that's subtended by some interior angle theta. Right? In the last video we talked about what subtend means. We know that that one radian, an angle of one radian, subtends an arc of length r. So in general, if we're looking at arc length of an arbitrary arc, we can use this relationship to relate the arc length of any arc to the angle that's subtended by that arc. Right? I know that one radian of angle measure subtends an arc of length radius r. So if I have theta radians, whatever theta is, that's going to subtend an arc, and I'll denote the arc length as s, of length theta times r. Right? Just like we have over here, one radian is an arc of one r, two radians is an arc of two r's. Well, if I had three halves radians, well, that would be an arc length of three halves times the radius r. And that's going to be true for any interior angle theta. Now, uh, a couple of key points. First of all, to use this formula, theta needs to be in radians, right? If we use degrees here, it's not going to be quite right because degrees does not have that same relationship with arc length that we have with this natural um, radian unit of measurement. So we must have theta in radians. If you are given a problem where theta is in degrees, before you can find the arc length, you need to use our conversion formulas from the last video to convert those degrees into radians, and then we can plug it in and we're good to go. Okay. Uh, the second thing uh, for these, we'll always be looking at a theta for these formulas that's between 0 and 2 pi. All right. Once we go um, beyond 2 pi, uh, then we're just going to be repeating it, but the arc length's not going to get any bigger. Right? 2 pi means that the arc is the entire circle, and if you keep going, that doesn't necessarily increase the arc length. All right. So a couple of restraints there. Now the next thing I want to talk about with this circle is area. And when I, I mean area, I mean area of a circular sector. So I'm circular sector. And what I mean by that is, just like we have this arc that is subtended by this angle theta, we also have this circular sector that I'm shading in up here. Right? This is a section of the circle that's kind of cut out, like a piece of pie or pizza, from this circle. Now I know that for a circle, we have a formula for the area, right? We know that on a circle, the area is equal to pi times the radius squared. Okay, But a sector is only going to be a portion of this circle, right? A sector is whatever our angle theta is divided by 2 pi is, you can think of it as, a, as if of a circle, right? In other words, let's say that my theta was an angle of uh, pi exactly. 
then I would have one half of a circle would be that sector, right? Pi would take me one half of the way around the circle, I'd be cutting the circle in half. So the area of a circular sector, we have this formula. If we take the area of a circle, which is pi r squared, and then I multiply that by the portion of the circle that I'm concerned with, right? This right here gives me the entire circle. I only want one theta out of two pi of that total circle. So I'm just gonna multiply by that, that by theta over two pi. This is the portion of the circle that I'm concerned with. This is my sector. So I get a cancellation here in the pi's. And we have this new formula. The area of a circular sector is one half theta r squared. So we don't need to calculate out the whole circle necessarily and then figure out that portion stuff. This, this formula is doing that for us. And then that's exactly what it is. Okay, so two easy formulas. Uh, these formulas, they're not too bad to derive out on your own um, if you remember these concepts. And really, it all boils down to what the definition of radian is. If we can remember what one radian means with respect to the radius in just an arbitrary circle, these formulas just kind of jump out at us, don't they? Okay, now I'm going to do some examples of these in the next video, but I want to talk about one more concept, and that's circular motion. circular motion. Now when we think of any kind of motion, uh, for example, miles an hour, if you're driving your car, your car goes at a certain speed, right, a certain speed of motion, and we measure that motion in miles per hour. And in general, when we measure any kind of motion, it's measured as a ratio of the distance traveled over a certain period of time right? We usually say, you know, I moved five feet in one second. You know, we always have the total distance that we've moved with respect to, or as a ratio to, um, some increment of time. So there's no difference here. We have two different kinds of circular motion we can talk about. One is angular speed. Now angular speed, we usually denote as this, this character omega, it just looks like a W, it's kind of rounded at the bottom. Okay. Angular speed, this is going to be the change in my angle over time. So it's, it's really just how much am I traveling in terms of angles, in terms of angle measure, with respect to some unit of time, right? So here t is time. Now this depends on, you know, we can, we'll have to do conversions later, and again we'll do examples in the next video. But this could be, you know, maybe I, I do one rotation every minute, so my angular speed would be uh, my angular speed would be two pi radians over one minute, or two pi radians per minute. Okay. Now we also have a linear speed. Now linear speed means when I'm traveling around on the outside of the circle, right? Angular speed speed means what's the change in the angle over time. Linear speed means how much total distance is traveled around the outside of the circle over time. Now we just got a formula for finding the distance over the outside of the circle, right? And um, well first we, we usually denote linear speed as this v. But we, we know that we can measure a distance on the outside of the circle by, a, by an arc length, right? We denoted that s. So s we use as the variable, just like we did in the arc length formula, um, for the distance that we're traveling around the circle or for any distance of an arc on the outside of a, of a circle. So we're looking at how much distance s we're traveling with respect to time. And again, uh, this time, uh, the units that we use for time are going to be based on uh, whatever kind of problem that you're looking at. Now before I end this video, um, there's a useful relationship between these two things. Usually if we know the angular speed or we know the linear speed, it's very easy to find the other. And that's because if we look at this linear speed v, this is equal to the arc length s over t, right? But we just found out uh, in the last part before I, I took it away, we know that this s, this arc length, this is equal to my angle that the arc length s subtends times the radius of my circle, right? So my linear speed is the same thing as um, theta times r over t. Well, I can just kind of put this r on the side, right? And put this r out in front. And I know that theta over t, 
well, this is my angular speed, isn't it? My angular speed is defined as the change in theta over t. So this is the same as r times my angular speed. Right? Let me compress that all together. My linear speed, v, is the radius of my circle times my angular speed. Now this makes sense, right? This relationship is the same. You know, we want to think here. Um, my arc length s is equal to the radius times my angle, right? So my total arc length is equal to the radius times my total angle. Well, so we can kind of we kind of carry over that relationship here. My uh, linear speed or the speed along my arc is the same as the radius times the speed of my angle, right? For every change in the angle, multiply that by the radius, and I get my change in my arc, right? These formulas are uh, almost the same formula, it's just that one's talking about total distance, one's talking about the relative change, uh, which you know derives back down to total distance. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to do examples of all three of these concepts that I talked about here. Um, this can be arc length, um, area of a circular sector, and circular motion, and uh, we'll see you there.